What if I told you that you're in a simulation right now? How would you know? What if a race of machines had sometime in the past enslaved the human race and wanted to use them as batteries? Well, that's something we might be able to calculate. How many humans does it take to power the matrix? Let's go all the way back to 1999 and set the scene. In The Matrix, humanity creates AI that eventually turns on us, forcing us into bondage for battery power, perpetually producing all the energy the machines would ever need. Now, I know that the machine's power also comes from a form of fusion, but let's set that aside for now and focus only on human batteries. Let's take the red pill, shall we? How much energy does the average person produce, according to The Matrix? How much energy does the average person produce, according to The Matrix? Huh. Deja vu. Famously, according to Morpheus, the human body produces 25,000 BTUs, or British thermal units, of body heat, let's say, per day, and more bioelectricity than a 120-volt battery. Converting this to units that we can use, the body heat alone nets the machines about 300 watts of power per person. And if they're harnessing all the bioelectricity, considering that humans don't conduct much of a current or else uh, we would fry, that nets the machines another about 15 watts of power. And if the machines enslaved the entire world's population in 1999, or about 6 billion people on the planet, then the total energy output from all these people, considering our previous units, would be almost 2 terawatts. That's 2 trillion watts, or 5 times the output of all the nuclear reactors on the planet. Would that be enough to power the matrix? Well, that's a hard question to answer. What is the matrix anyway? Basically the largest simulation ever produced? Let's compare it to maybe how much power it takes to run the entire internet. The matrix should at least be that massive. Estimates for this number vary depending on what you were looking at and how, but one study in 2011 found that based on the power it took to create all the devices that access the internet and the infrastructure that runs the internet, in total the internet drains 140 gigawatts of power. Another estimate based on an investigation of data centers in the New York Times found that the internet in total sucks up 30 gigawatts of power. Both of these numbers are over a thousand times less than our estimate of human battery production. Enslaving the human race could power the internet between 14 and 64 times over. This might be enough to power the matrix. Whoa. But there's more of a problem here than the illusory nature of spoons. Oh, come on. First of all, the numbers are way off. Studies of the body's electric potential find voltages that are thousands of times less than what Morpheus states, and the body does not put out 25,000 BTUs per day. It's more like 8,000 to 10,000 BTUs based on the number of calories you need to eat to live. Plugging these numbers in, we only get a total human battery production of 0.6 terawatts, or only a third of what we calculated before. Furthermore, no power plant is 100% efficient. If the machines could harvest just 30% of all the energy coming out of humans, that would be really good. And now we're down to 0.18 terawatts, or another third of what we just calculated, and just enough energy to power only one of our upper estimation of what the internet takes. But even furthermore, because of inefficiencies, the machines would have to put more energy into humans in the form of food, which they can't grow, than they would ever get out. This defeats the whole purpose. At least the filmmakers seem to know this, as the first version of their script didn't use humans as batteries. They used their brains in linkages for combined processing power. We've even done this with rats. No, seriously, look it up. I guess this is where a form of fusion comes in, right? I mean, it doesn't really make sense to use humans as a power source unless it's some kind of insult, some kind of retribution for decades of robot subjugation and servitude. That's something far more sinister, and the robots would know this. They can do these kind of calculations like that. Why? Because science.
Want more science? Check out my last video on the scientific difference between fast and slow zombies. Subscribe to Nerdist for more videos if you want because science two days earlier than anyone else head to Vessel at Vessel.com slash Nerdist. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, you can hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks.